keep talking. It's a cool topic. Yeah. So like, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like curb your enthusiasm a little bit, where like you can tell like Larry David with like a lot of the things that happen, like a lot of random stuff that happens to him in the show. It's like stuff that probably happened to him in real life. That that that's what's good about uh, about Silicon Valley is that the kind of people that you deal with in terms of like HR and PR and just dealing with like. A, a, a stupid owner and stuff like that and like all that kind of stuff like it literally does it like one for one and you're just like yeah like when you watch the show you're like i know someone just like that and i think i think that's why that show is so good because it's so easily relatable like you look at the characters and you're like yeah that's my friend like i know who that person is that acts like that that, 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 that like part. archetype yeah like the archetypes yeah. are so good especially especially like the uh like they make fun of Google a lot, but they call it Hooli. Like in the show, it's called Hooli. It's pretty much, but it's pretty much like they're just making fun of Google, and like the stereotype of like working there and like just like this campus kind of mentality. You're on a campus and you have like the bikes and all this free food and stuff and whatnot, and just like working in the tech industry. Like it's so spot on. And I'm just like every time I watch it, like I'm literally cracking up of like how people act. And I, I think I think it hits more home for me because I live in the Bay Area, so I see these people like in my day to day dealings. And I'm just like, yep, like you're that guy from that episode that <laughs> you probably met the writer and didn't know, and they wrote an episode about you. So you should definitely watch it on uh, HBO if you haven't seen it. It's like, it's solid. Yeah, I'll definitely give that one another try. I think the last <clears throat> yeah. time I watched it was when it was new, and I saw like a couple episodes and just like got back to college. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, I didn't have time at that time. It's really fast too, because they're, they're not hour, they're not hour episodes. Yeah, they're half hours, there. right? They're like half hour, like 15 minutes. So you can go through an entire season in like a day. Like it's very, very easy. So I think it's on like season three now. And so I think it I think it comes on like right before Veep. I don't know if you've ever seen Veep. No, never heard of that one. Veep is really good. It has it's a it's a lane from uh from Seinfeld. Remember Elaine? Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty much like uh it pretty much just makes fun of like all like the political shit that happens in the world. Like imagine it's like it's like all like the kind of Hillary Clinton Donald Trump shit that we just kind of look at and just laugh at. It's like that, but it's a TV show where this girl's like a vice president, and it's just like all the shit that like oh, so it's happens. A, a vice president Veep. I get it. Yeah, Veep. Cool. And so she's vice president, and it's pretty much like you know we we kind of we kind of look at like when they kind of have like these crazy speeches or whatever talking about the White House and all of these things. But it kind of goes behind the scenes, and it really shows that like half of them don't know what the fuck they're doing. Like it is kind of like on the fly just kind of thinking of things you know to kind of like give to the press and it's yeah. like that kind of aspect is really funny like when it comes to like her like getting speeches and writing speeches or whatever like it goes behind the scenes of all that of like all like the stupid bs you have to do when it comes to like just dealing with politics so it's a really funny show it actually won a couple of uh, academy awards i think or no not academy award or whatever the tv show is it emmy i, uh, which I don't care I feel like every time I talk to you guys, you like hype up some other movie or show that I'd never heard of or need to watch. And it's like, what do you God, do with your so, day? I'm so uncultured. What, what do you do with your day? We hype anything up, do we? I mean, I Jurassic won't. Park, we hyped up with uh, Denzel. That's about it. <laughs> what does your what day look that? like? Like, what do you do? <laughs> God, <ramen>? <laughs> <laughs> I get it all my life. Just dye your hair ramen color, dude. Is that all you do with your life, man? Get dude, yeah, man. It's together. expensive business. So, you know, for noodles being inexpensive, it costs a lot to get your hair to look like them, right? You're that you're that rap video of that kid that raps about ramen noodles. Oh God, that was a so that was so funny. So if you guys yeah, hear nice, beeping nice in the background, too. I'm timing myself. So I was like, "What's that beeping? Like, check your oven." <laughs> oh, Danny, uh, Danny, Danny obviously that said he has enjoys. Cool too. It's like a ramen noodle shirt, it's like a ramen print shirt and pants. It's like where did yeah, you get yeah. that? That was <laughs> funny, man. He's just talking what, about how he's like orange. ramen noodles. Yeah. What did Danny say? What? Uh, Dan, Danny Luis, he said, I don't even enjoy politics, and I love Veep. How oh. have you not seen Veep? Is he in chat? Hey, hey try to get Dan up in here. Hey, you should join our Discord. <laughs> try to get, work that out, message him. Oh, no, the Discord. <laughs> um, anyhow. I think I'm only following him, so I might he might not get my message. Yeah, maybe Caleb, maybe Caleb can do it. Um, Wait, what do I think I do? Just message Dan to see if he wants to join up in our Discord. Uh, okay, let me message him on Facebook. Yeah, and then yeah, you, now you can do that. And you have like an admin control, so you can invite people too. And if you don't know how to do that, Mike can walk you through. Yeah, I don't. It's really easy. I mean, if you look in the top corner, you used to say like invite people, and then you just get the link and just make it. Um... So I have to see if he has. Don't Discord ever message me. No, he doesn't even need this card. He'll just sign up. He'll just sign him up as long as he's on a computer or something. Okay. 
All right, let me. But anyway, anyhow, hello everybody. How's everyone doing? Welcome to the stream. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all, the 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 fans, and the homies, and anyone else who's really interested in joining our Discord. You know, message Mike or John, um, or even Kalen. You know, like they'll hook you up with a, a temporary link. This link is temporary, meaning that if you share it with anyone else, uh, it probably won't work in the future. But it's only because we want to build the community within our Discord. Uh, we we have moments where people hang out. As you can, there's other people in, actually in here. You guys want to say hello? <laughs> to other people. We got the Yes crew. Hello, guys. Yeah. So these people are students of mine. Some of them are not. Some of them are just fans of just being good at art and trying to become a good at artist. And it's just a really cool thing to. Here, I'm gonna try to actually put this for two minutes. So I try to do two or three in a few minutes. Um, and it's a really cool thing, and I really like it. And I want to build it, and I don't want it to keep it private. But at the same time, I don't want it to be super open, you know. So I think this is the best way to do it: is just invite people live in real time. Uh, a lot of you guys are aspiring artists. And a lot of you guys want to achieve, you know, greatness. And I want to build a community around people like that and just hang out with awesome people. The rules of this court are very simple: just don't be a dick. <laughs> I mean, you could be weird. Like, we, we have some weird people, right? We got Kalen. We got ramen hair here. So, yeah, what's up? as long as you're not mean and, like, malicious to others, um, we don't really mind that at all. Like, if you have, like, uh, you know, we had, like, some friends, some good friends, and they were, like, you know, we, we talked to them and hang out. And it's all about just community and building the community. <clears throat> and so... For us, Wait, so how do I how do I do it? If someone asks for it, someone just asks for a Discord link. So just do... just uh, message them directly and send them the the link, and then they should follow the instructions from there. On the are you using the Discord app? Yeah, I'm using the app. I don't know. Okay, I'm using so, the computer app. Yeah. Okay, so next to Robot Pencil, it'll have a down arrow on the right. You click on that, and it says Invite People. You okay. click on that, copy the link. And then uh, there's a checkbox that says uh, permanent or like what well, was well, not permanent, but the <laughs> dance response is so non -ex good. non expiring Some whatever. Weird wow shit! Some BlizzCon expansion pack shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as if he has Discord. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. No, like so nobody needs Discord. Else. Nobody needs di that. That's the beauty of it. Like it just you, you just follow the instructions and then you you get it. It's like that simple. It's you great. don't even have to make an account. Yeah, you, you just really don't. You can just come in and hang out, but I, I'd recommend them to make an account. Get it. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Kill it. Um, yeah, so I need to push these a little further. Okay, cool. It worked. I gave it to like two people. Yeah, it's really easy. I gave it to, gave it to Kyle, the guy that actually had that same uh, medical condition that oh, yeah, you Kyle. are currently having. Yeah. yeah. So I'd love just... to have him come in and join in. Now, there is a delay or weird kind of mic problem if you don't use the desktop app, but, I mean, it only takes a minute to download, um, and I highly recommend it. It makes your bandwidth and everything much better. But even if you don't download it, you can, you can still hear us and talk to us really easily, um, which is really great. Cool. Instant invites and which codes. Cool. All right. <clears throat> well, we'll see if he uh, ends up joining us. Yeah, it's, it's cool because you don't have to like be like make a call or add people like to, like in Skype you have to add you know like this is just like oh we're streaming like just join jump in the stream channel that's it. Yeah, that is that is kind of cool. Now that I don't have to manage thing. anything. I just can keep working. I don't have to tell anybody to do anything other than share the links. So once Danny's in and he's part of the the crew, he can just whatever we're doing, it, he can just jump in. He doesn't have to like. <laughs> We don't, you know what I mean? Like nobody has to do anything. We just, just <laughs> we're tell doing them to a jump raid, in. Danny. Come on. Yeah, we're doing art raid, bro. Art, art raid. What would that be? But what this is, where we, we're all trying to just draw and talk. Art now, raid. Yeah, I put a few suggestions because they're really adam Like from what uh, Michael's telling me, they're really like uh, active in terms of feedback. You know, and so I'm gonna once we get to like maybe 200 or even people on our Discord, I'm thinking we might have some leverage to even like suggest some stuff. And I might even, like, you know, tell them what I think they can do and just do, like, a video for them to show them um, the kinds of things that would be really cool. If they don't already have them planned, I'm sure they will work towards it. And that's the cool thing about uh, community-based software is that, you know, they're really attentive to that stuff. 
And I'm like, my hands are cramping up from trying to draw this so small. <laughs> I, I might want to zoom in just a little bit more on these things. So I'm going to try to do 50. Now, whether they're good or not, we'll decide. I want to do it through lines because I don't normally draw in lines. And so this is going to be a challenge for me. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, anyone else wants to join in, welcome to join in. Especially uh, once you're in, you're in for good. And if you want to like invite your friends or pals to this, like you have to talk to one of the admins. And we'll, we'll trust your judgment, you know? Like don't try to bring in again people that are just not... Uh, artists are trying to become artists like if they're close friends and they work, go to school with you or work with you whatever um, you know we're more than happy to invite this you know it's under the robot pencil brand but there's no there's no scope of like making it like a a, a robot pencil thing it's just that's what it's called and it might change the name of it later once we which is more suitable for what it is but uh, for me it's just about building that community bank and finding ways. And I feel like this is finally the, the first thing out of all the many things I've tried online, you know, that makes the most sense, right? It's super easy, um, super well designed, I think. So anyway, yeah, sure. And in using something like uh, uh, Join Me, we can do, you know, really cool like demo sessions and study group stuff like I plan on doing some study group stuff this week because I need to start practicing some things again that I need to practice um, so I was going to get back into practicing some hardcore anatomy stuff and I was going to have people come in and we'll just talk about it you know we'll all sit down and discuss and try to teach each other and learn from one another because a lot of these people are my students that are in here right now um, that are in the discord and so they already kind of have this sense of community because a lot of them hang out with each other and talk with each other outside of class i've just been trying to find a way to kind of build a like kind of like a gated community where we can just all hang out because we have a facebook group and it's really good it works really well but i feel still feel like it's not as active as like discord is only we've been only using for a few weeks now almost a month maybe and people are way more active here they're like constantly talking to each other sharing work and it's just great um and i think it's just the way that it's set up you know but anyway uh, people are welcome to ask questions too by the way if they want yeah I'll be trying to read the questions unfortunately for some reason the uh, comment section isn't updating oh yeah I, heard I don't know why about this. It, this, it hasn't happened to me yet but I've heard Kalen had this problem but yeah like I'm getting notifications that people are commenting but it's not updating yeah I'm doing it all on my phone so I can see everything See if what the questions Maybe I'll do that. are. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I've been doing it, because it just works the best that way. <laughs> hey, Heather McGowan's watching. Hey, Heather, how you doing? I love that lady. Mrs. McGowan's watching. Mrs. McGowan. Hey, David. McGowan. David Levy. David Levy. Dude, we got celebrities watching this thing. Oh shit. Yeah, we got Jay Wong. We got celebrities. <laughs> Jay Wong, the one that made me. Oh yeah, I made shouts to Jay Wong for making me the awesome uh, Street Fighter art for me. Oh great! Can you guys uh, close the door, sweetheart? Or Julian? When you guys uh, wait, hold on. Hey Julian, Delilah, come here. I want to talk to you. I'm gonna beat you guys live stream. Hey, when you guys, hey, open the door. Open the door. Start. Open the door. When you guys are going in and out, close the door. Okay. Okay. Hey. Okay. Hey. I'm gonna beat that little boy. <laughs> I'm gonna grab Delilah. I'm gonna beat Julian with Delilah. <laughs> Just like ragdoll. Yeah, ragdoll physics. They're so cute today after school. They they drew me some really cool pictures. Delilah's back to drawing cute stuff again. I don't know if I approve of that. She's drawing zombies and pirates, and I was like, hell yes. Now she's drawing mermaids again. I don't know. I don't know if I wanted to draw mermaids. Um, but yeah, we got some cool people up in here. Oh, we got Kaylin Ray up in this. We got uh, Chris Wilson. Yeah, if you guys want, I want to ask questions, feel free to ask. We got people looking at the questions, helping moderate. I got, like, so many screens in front of me right now, it's ridiculous. You know, like, I... I People are messaging me uh, questions and asking for Discord link. But we have a question now. Okay, cool. 
You know, before you go on to that, yeah, I actually okay. minimize. Like, I, I only have one monitor now. I like, got rid of, like, that, too. I'm just, like, minimize everything. <laughs> minimize, like, the amount of work I've been trying to do. Minimize the um, uh, monitors I have. Like, minimize the softwares that I'm, I'm just, like, trying to get back to a minimalistic type of styles, man. It's hard to get back to it, but I'm working on it. So like yeah, like I try to use only one or two windows open at once. I have so many things open. Yeah, I know. But I love it. It's uh, the way I, I was like talking it. to one of my students, and she has like a fair Fairfax, I think it's called, or layer like those like things that you have to get like a planner basically for school. Oh okay. Like when you go back to school, you should know you're in high school still. Um, uh. And so, <laughs> and so. Uh, uh, I was thinking about getting something like that. I was like, that sounds like great, like something just physical. Because I'm writing in like a, a grid sketchbook right now for that. Like, and I've been using Google uh, Calendar for that too. And this is pretty cool. Uh, to just get back to kind of basics. Where me, Dan, and Kaylin and uh, Alex were all hanging out last night for a little bit. And uh, we were talking about um, just like writing. It's just so so simple. Like, if you want to create something, just start writing. And I'm like, yeah, that's such a good idea. Except I, I hate writing, like in the terms of storytelling. I'm just not a big fan. But the, but it, the idea of physicality of like the tools you use, I'm really a big fan of that. Just simple tools, you know. But anyway, what was the question? All right. How many thumbnails do I have right now? Okay. One, two, question for the stream five, since ten. the chat isn't working. What is your guys' thought on talent? I don't believe in it. I think that uh, some people clearly have advantages over others, right? And um, this is like the fourth time I talked about this today, or this week. Like I talked to my Uber driver about this last night, and then oh, yeah. my Lyft driver the other day, because <laughs> they both were like, "Oh man, I don't know how the talent, I'm like talent doesn't exist, homie." And I'll explain it the way that I explained it to them. Um, you know, and I, I've talked about this in many links. I'll, I'll bring up a different person. Uh, I usually use Kobe Bryant. Let's use Michael Jordan in this instance. Now, Michael Jordan, uh, do you know how tall Michael Jordan is, Kaylin? It doesn't matter. Um, he's taller than I me. Say Kobe's like 6'6", six, six, so I want to say he's like 6'6", six, 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 I think. I think he's the same size. Same size. So, so Michael Jordan is taller than me. I'm 5'9", right? He's definitely taller than me, right? He's almost a whole foot taller. I'm getting caught up in noodles. I'm pixel fucking. Um, <laughs> uh, and for me, like, oh, it's because I zoomed in. Don't zoom in. Um, for me, like, that's not why Michael Jordan is better than me at basketball. It's not because he's taller than me. Now, that, that could be contributed to the actual word of talent, right? Someone that's born with something. Like, he's born being taller. You know, he's born with that physicality of being a great basketball player, for sure. But that's not why, like, that, that is not, like, when, he, when people interview him, they're like, hey, you know, what does it take to become Michael Jordan? He's not like, just be tall, bro. <laughs> you know, be real tall. Because the people that he's going against, some of them are actually taller than him, right? Uh, and, and most people are the same height as these basketball players. So it's like, they're not, it's not because they're, they're tall is what makes them amazing, Right? It's because of all that years of training and prep. What the? What is that like eating and breathing really hard? <laughs> who's that? <laughs> yeah, who, who's that? Is that Caleb? No, <laughs> not eating. <laughs> is it Denzel? <laughs> Denzel up in here. Denzel's always eating. Um. Anyway. Um. So yeah, if you think about it like that, right? If you think about talent as something that you're supposed to be given, like it's like just a God-given thing. Um, then it's kind of an insult to all those people who really worked for it and really practiced and trained. And because I've been doing this for ten years, right? And so for for someone to tell me that I'm talented is, is kind of bizarre, right? Because like to be honest, like all I did is something that anyone else could truly do. Now I, I might have different tastes. I might have different things that I'm attracted to when I want to paint and draw, right? These are definitely true. But does that make me a talented artist? No, it's just my opinion now when it comes to, when we start talking about stuff like that, right? 
And so what, when, I, when people ask me about talent, I say, you know, don't worry about stuff like that. And don't even worry about the advantages that other people have above you. For instance, you know, Michael Jordan has that advantage, right? So if I were to train just as much and just as hard as many years as he did and had all the same circumstances, the only difference is that I'm not, I'm still 5'9", right? I'm still, I'm still me, right? But I have all the stuff I had, like, like his father, I believe, was a coach, right? He had, like, all these great... Uh, opportunities to really learn how to become great, right? I grew up in the same city, all the stuff that Michael Jordan had, but I'm still only five uh, nine, or I'm just still Anthony Jones in terms of my physicality, right? Still look like a Mexican. Um, yeah, I think Michael Jordan will still beat me, right? He will still have that advantage, right? But I would be, I'll be amongst the best people in the world at basketball does this make sense and there's already great examples of people that are not as tall as michael jordan who make a huge living from this like uh um the professor he's like 5 11 he's only two inches taller than me right and he's yeah, he's, he's like a world-renowned uh ball player man yeah and he, he, he is his, his job he goes around the world playing and he even plays against people that are like six seven and six and he balls them up right you know what I mean? Like, he, he, I don't even think that he, he chose not to play in the NBA for some reasons. I'm not sure why. Uh, not, he, he's good, but NBA is a little bit harder because um, it's one of those things where he, he needs to be taller, unfortunately. So he can beat so, like every other person. So, but it's one of those things where it's a criteria for entrance, yeah. but not a criteria for excellence. So he's because really Iverson was not tall either, and maybe he was an exception. My point is, is that there's always an opportunity to be the exception. And maybe Professor wasn't. But still, to my point, he's doing what he loves, and he's making a living yeah, from he's it. He's still very freaking good. Yeah, he's he's making a living. He that's what he does. He plays right, and he, maybe he's not Michael Jordan. Maybe he doesn't get to go to NBA. But it, it's like at that point, like you know, he's he's playing with what he got, and he he's he's so good, and debatably could probably ball up so, half of the people uh, that are in the NBA. You know, and it's just that that stupid politics that might prevent him to get in there. You know, but. Yeah. But he probably can ball a lot of those guys up, you know? And it's no, just... He, he definitely can. That's yeah, because I think he's played against some of them, right? In those, like, na- like those international <laughs> tournaments and stuff, and he, like, murders them. Yeah. And they're just, like, they get so pissed. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, I should be playing NBA. You can't even... You don't even know how to dribble <laughs> the ball, bro. And that's a great example of, like, someone who may have not had even the talent, right? Which would have been, like, the, the actual talent, which is being tall. A tall person, Right? And still found a way to make a living from that. So, like, I always tell people, don't be caught up with this idea of talent. Just focus on you and focus on what you want to do. And don't let others, like, other people are going to convince you all the time why you can't do a thing, you know. But you shouldn't be the one to do that, right? All, all, all kinds of people are going to give you hate and going to tell you why you suck <laughs> and stuff like that. But you should be your own cheerleader and count on the fact that you can do the things you want to do, right? Yeah, it's it's definitely, I always say, a criteria for entrance, you know, like being tall is definitely going to help. But just because you're tall doesn't mean that you are going to be good because there are yeah. plenty of tall players who are not good at basketball. So it's like what's one of those things where um, uh, the reason why people like Michael Jordan or Kobe or any like it's, it's really hard to look at talent um, in any kind of any kind of professional setting and and look at someone and say, Oh, they're just amazing. They were just there. If you look at if you look at the history of anyone that's really good at something, any kind of sport, any kind of activity, you, if you look at their 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 upbringing, they they probably you'll notice that they put a lot of effort and time into it. And it may and it's a lot of times they they don't know that they're doing it. But like like Bob Ross said, he said talent or skill is like pursued interest. Just anything that you're willing to do over and over again, like that. You're, you're you're probably gonna get good at it because you like doing it. So. Pursued um, people like Michael Jordan is a really good example because <clears throat> people don't know that when he first started, people that are basketball fans, uh, he wasn't that good actually. He was getting beat up a lot um, in the paint because he would drive to the hole, he would get hit, and he, his body couldn't take that pounding. And so he actually didn't do that well. So the next, the, so what he realized is that he had to get a lot stronger. He had to adapt because he was like, these people are really, really big, and they're hitting me, and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting injured all the time. I'm like it, it sucks. So literally, like over the season, he went to the weight room. The next season, he came back and he was yoked. And if you ever look pictures of it, look up 
look at Michael Jordan before, he, like when he was skinny, look at him when he's in the NBA. It's two different things. And you're like, what the hell just happened? And he was like, well, I just had to, I had to get buff. I had to get bigger to be able to take the hits. And a lot of people weren't willing to do that, weren't willing to put that kind of like, he literally like sculpted his body to be efficient in basketball. It's the, it's the same thing that you do in art. Like you're, you're kind of building your repertoire of tools that you're going to use to be efficient in concept art. So there's, there's very rarely any other situation, really anything in, in the world that I can think of where someone was just amazing, like just talented when they first started. The only person I can think of really would might be Bobby Fischer, but even that's kind of a long shot. Yeah, but he's like, played a lot of chess. Like there's obviously yeah. savants and stuff, people that are like having advantage. Well, that's the thing though, he he's he's the only one that I could probably consider it because he was like beating grandmasters at 15, and he hadn't even played that long. Dude. So that was kind of like a well, where Body. where was that? Like where was that that hundred hours coming from? You know what I mean? But when you kind of, look, you kind from... of look at like his upbringing and stuff like that, you can kind of you can kind of assume you can kind of see that like he it kind of came natural to him. But then after that, like he became obsessed with the game. And then from there, it just kind of just went into this whole kind of like reverse engineering and really thinking about like chess as like art and really kind of like figuring out like he was like he like he it became more and more uh, uh, appealing to him to play against himself. Like he didn't care mm. about playing against other people. He played against himself because he was so like into just trying new things and, and trying to just really break so... down chess. Let me read. In March 1949, six-year-old Bobby Fisher and sister Joan learned how to play chess using the instructions from a set bought at a candy store. When Joan lost interest in chess and uh, Regina did not have any time to play, it left Bobby Fisher or left Fisher to play many of the first games against himself. When the family vacationed at Patoga, whatever, Long Island, the summer, Bobby found a book of old chess games and studied it intensely. Um... Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's no exception. He um, started when he was six or seven, and he basically, from this first sentence, he played with his sister, and his sister's like, I'm bored of this. And then she started, then he started playing against himself, and whenever he'd vacation, he'd play all the time, and then he found a book on old chess games and studied it, studied it intensely, okay? And so then when he was about 15, that's about <laughs> nine years, right? He was, yeah. he was starting to play Grandmasters. So I, I don't know if 15 is the example there, but I'm not, I'm not saying you're not wrong here. I'm just saying that... He no, but, you, but I'm just trying to point to you. Like you, you, you said, you know, the only person you could think of that would, might have been like someone that had like genuine, out-of-the-box talent, I just, you know, I, I have a hard time. There's very few people that I believe can do that. Well, but even those so people... Not so much out-of-the-box talent. It's more so like how fast he was able to pick it up. Took him nine years. Like took him nine years that's not fast at all okay but look up look up when he was playing pros like look that up yeah that's what when I'm he was curious. 15 and he started when what's he up? was six what's up guys the, the, okay listen to what i'm trying what's to up? tell listen to what i'm trying to say so you're saying like this is this is the problem that i think a lot of people have is that they they see them oh he's at 15 years old holy smokes you know like yeah he's young but he started young does it make sense like I started becoming a concept artist when I was 23. I started older, but it took me about, you know, almost 10 years to be where I'm at right now, right? And it was very mm -hmm. similar, intense study and practice. Like it says it here in this, this early years, he played with his brother or his sister, and when she got bored of it, right, he basically played with his mom, and then when, he, when they got bored of it, he played by himself. Like, he loved chess. Like, it was like a pursued interest. Like, you just said yourself, right? Yeah. Pursued and, then, and then when he vacationed, he found a book on old chess games and studied it intensely. You know? Like, that's like... Like, it's, it's proof. It's more proof to whatever we're trying to say, you know? It's like, he loved it. Like, it was clearly something he cared about, right? And yeah. so when he shows up, when he is, like, I think it was 13, which is uh, about seven years. Seven years later, he shows up, he plays, uh, he won a brilliant game against, the, it was called the Game of the Century, and then starting at f age 14, Fisher played in United States Championships, winning each at, less, uh, at least a one-point margin, and at 15, became the youngest grandmaster up to that time, and the youngest candidate for the world championship. So, so you're right, like, he was definitely a master at a very young age, right? Mm -hmm. But... Like, this is the point that I'm trying to say. It's not like he started when he was 15 or 14 or 13 no, or 10 or 9 or 8 
or seven, it was six, six years old. You know what I mean? And no, that's what you were trying to say. Like you were like trying to say that's the only person you can no, think of, what right? No, because the thing is that like okay, so he started at seven and at thirteen six. he's killing it. Okay, six. So he's starting at six, he's killing it. Again, a lot of his a lot of his bigger games that he had played, where he's playing against other people, not just playing against himself, happened like what six years later. You had to look at some of the other the other. That's why that's why I would say it was like that's probably like the closest thing I can think of because anyone around that that if you looked at any other chess player during that time. A lot of them were way older, had been playing a lot longer, and were not nearly as good as him. Now, granted, we don't know like how much well, time they're putting well, in. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, let's let's investigate the other people too. Like, you can't assume that. Like, here's the thing. Like, when you're a kid, here's the advantage of being a kid and picking up things when you're younger. You don't have other responsibilities. Like, some of these other people probably are not making a living, uh, becoming uh, chess masters, right? And Bobby Fischer. Might have been like there's like I said like a lot of things we don't know and that's the point. But he took advantage of his opportunity and he probably paid just as much. That's that's the kind of argument I'm trying to say. Like just as much as some of these older people, but in a shorter span of time. You know what I mean? Like let's say they all spent. You see what I'm saying? Like they might have spent ten thousand hours, right? And he might have spent ten thousand hours, but it was like his every waking moment. You know. Where they might have spread it throughout, of like, like if you spend three or four hours a day like studying chess, like let's say that's like what you were doing, but maybe Bobby Fischer was studying chess 10, 12 hours a day, so he's exponentially getting that knowledge, and again he's he's unfiltered, right? He doesn't have kind of like any kind of um, uh, what you call it, uh, he doesn't have any kind of distraction too, right? Because he's a kid. You know, when you're a kid, yeah. like when I, when we were going to school, there's distractions, right? Like there's still things that were in our way and I had very few of them, whereas like some of my peers had a lot of them and I took advantage of that fact that I had less and less distraction, you know? And I always tell, tell people like, it really is just time and effort. And again, even if uh, Bobby Fischer, um, like he might've had an advantage on a cerebral level, right? Like I don't disagree with that at all, but even people with the greatest advantages like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Bobby Fischer still have to put in the work. You know, they can't just be like, all right, I'm going to just go play Grandmasters now because I'm a Grandmaster chess player. You know, that's yeah. that's kind of the point that I'm trying to get at. And I think you agree with that too. I'm not, I don't think you're disagreeing with that. I, I just think that was a good opportunity to point out. Even Bobby Fischer spent nearly a decade before he even played, like before he was really considered mm -hmm. a, a, a Grandmaster. That's a lot of time <laughs> to be playing chess. Right? Yeah, or that's a and lot of time just at, doing anything, yeah, even right? Then, at like his age, like twenty, it's only when he gets to like maybe twenty-five, like thirty years old, that that's where he starts to really just like, explode, kind of reverse, reverse engineer that shit. Yeah, and so I guess during that time, it's kind of just unheard of. That's why I say like he's like one that I would say could probably be the closest to that idea. But yeah. even then, you know, again. If you That's just do a little bit of research, movie. yeah, like here's here's the thing like too. He, suff he suffered in school, like he like his. <laughs> See, teachers... that's my boy. Like for whatever he like whatever he was doing, like chess was his life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. probably why he was grandmaster <laughs> level because other things. Yeah, like he suffered suffer. in school. Like yeah. uh, if you read, if because I'm a, I'm a big chess guy. Like you know he he did not do well in school. People were like, dude, all he talks about is chess or whatever, and he's like his grades are suffering, and he didn't give a shit. He's just like, fuck you guys. I mean, you're a chess guy, Kalen. Yeah, we used See, to play all the time, dude. To play, at, bro. At, actually, if you want to play, you gotta play Kevin. M remember Kevin, uh, AJ, uh, Asian Kevin, life drawing Kevin. Yeah, yeah, he's actually really freaking good. Um, I think he used to play like, like, competitively or like ranked stuff. Oh, wow. And so every once in a while, I'd have him come over and play. <laughs> and he just like, it's it's nuts. Like how smart that guy is, and how much he destroys me. Like he'll win, and then he'll like move the board. He was like, yeah. On the eighth move, uh, that's where that's where you that's where you messed up. And I'm like, what? And then he moves the pieces back like to exactly where they were. And I'm oh, like, wow. that was like ten minutes ago. Like, how do you remember <laughs> where the pieces were? He's like, oh, I, I just remember. Chess and he's is like, so it was cool. like Right here. He's like, so start from here, and then try it yeah, again. And like he just leaves. <laughs> I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like looking at the board, like, mm -hmm. what the fuck just happened? So like, so so getting to the to the point though, uh, I think I, I know Kalen agrees. With, what we're saying like we both agree and i think what what's great about what happened right now was that you know i almost every time like this happened to someone was like oh well what about mozart he composed songs when he was three years old right 
No, and, he uh, didn't compose anything good till he was like 20. Most of his stuff was Well, no, he did compose his first song, but it wasn't at three. Yeah, he composed it, it when yeah, it was when he was uh, it was five. And it's because his circumstances. His father was a great musician and a great teacher, right? Uh, <laughs> his sister played before him. You know, his, mom, his family clearly encouraged him. And he didn't write it. His, he composed it, but his father had to write it for him because his, he was five. He still didn't know his, like, ABCs. You know, he probably knew more musical, like, melody than he did, like, the basic alphabet, right? Uh, but again, it's just like, look at the circumstances. Like, yes, it's easy to th- assume that somebody is magically talented. But if you really look and do the research, it's almost always, there's very rarely, very rarely. And these are the people that, like, people like Bobby Fischer, people like Mozart, people like Leonardo da Vinci. Very rarely will you find someone that is just like the straight out of the box awesome at whatever the thing is right for no reason like there's no like like they just decided to do something and then they can do it and again there's those people do exist those are savants yeah. but they're very very rare like not even one percent of the population of this planet kind of rare the, the right? best example i can think of to right now would be uh Lionel messi you've, you've heard of his story right no like Lionel, you know who messi is right yes like, yes he's like one of the as a soccer player, you're talking to a soccer guy, he's probably the most prolific striker in the world today. Uh-huh. Um, he actually is not supposed to be as good as he is because a lot of people didn't want to actually uh, pick him up on the team because he was too small, actually. He's actually, he's actually really small. He's five. He's like 5'6", five, I think. 5'6", five, 5'5". Five, five. And then when he started playing high-level soccer, like it's very hard to be good at that, like, at that height. And a lot of, and he actually has like a syndrome where he couldn't grow. Actually, he actually has a disease that he couldn't grow. Probably so very similar to what I have, kid. but the opposite. And, um, and uh, he, a lot, a lot of people kind of looked over him, uh-huh. but he just began to kind of just develop how to. What he, what he got really good at was learning how to stay on his feet and like good center of gravity. So he used that to his advantage. So even though he's small, he's very very quick, and he learn, he knows how to use his body and throw it around. So he got very good at an early age about taking hits from bigger defenders and then staying on his feet. So now the issue that was about being a small a small striker, he eliminated that problem. And so now, like again, when this guy runs, if you just watch highlights of this guy, he just goes through defenders like it's That's nothing, cool. and it's crazy. As you look at someone like Cristiano Ronaldo, who's six one, and his thing about him is that he's just a physical dominant Stick, specimen. Dude. Like you mm-hmm. look at him, and he's meant to play soccer. He'll run through you. He'll run around you. He'll jump over you. But Messi is just as good as Ronaldo, if not better. Because just that work ethic, kind of dominating. Yeah, that work again, ethic like, and that. Look at him and say, "Yeah, you're you're too small. You can't play mm-hmm. the game." Which is it's just right in most in most cases. That's a thing. But he didn't look at that and say, "Yeah, All right, he took his disadvantage play. and turned it into an advantage." And turn it into an advantage, yeah. and so you don't see that very often. And and again, that's why you're seeing a lot lot more smaller strikers emerging now because they're looking at that's this great. guy and they're like, "This guy's five seven, yeah. and this guy's killing it in the league, playing against like people that have been bred to to play soccer." It's like. Like, I bread. guess that, it, it, <laughs> it no, probably have been bred, bred yeah. Like you're being put into an academy when you're literally seven years old yeah. and you're being brought up to play professional soccer. Yeah. And again, everyone looked looked him over because they were just like, yeah, he's too small. He's got a growth problem. He can't get big. He's not going to be able to get past defenders. Yeah. And he found a way around it. And if you watch him, he freaking kills it. And he's one of the best in the world. And he's 5'7", which is like... Like I play against five seven people in soccer, and I just knock them over. I'm like, fuck that! Like, I'm not gonna bite you. I'm gonna knock you over, and that's the end of that. But this guy, like, he's he's so explosive. Like he he made it. He turned his weakness into a strength, and and he's fine now. So yeah, uh, and so disadvantages like they, it's kind of mostly in your head sometimes. So getting to the kind of the the, the crux of answering this question, what we're trying to say is, you know, no, there's no really such thing as talent. Uh, of course, there's advantages. Of course, there's disadvantages, but there's plenty of examples of people who either overcome those disadvantages or uh, took advantage of their advantages. And there's people that have advantages that don't take a, uh, their advantages, you know, in, into account, you know. And so all you got to know is that if you put your best effort, you're going to be amongst the best. This is how it works. You know, you might not be the best. Like if I were to run every day and train just as hard as Usain Bolt, uh, I might never be able to beat him. Right, but he is the fastest person on this planet. You know, uh, if I go to the Olympics and I place twenty seventh, that means I'm t- the twenty seventh fastest person on this planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's still not a bad thing. That's still something to be very proud of, right? 
And I think for whatever reason, people feel like if they're not the best, then they're kind of like worthless. But it's like kind of, that's stupid. Not everybody can be the best, but you can damn well get close. And you can definitely be happy by being damn close, you know? Like, I consider myself one of the fastest painters on, on, you know, in digital painting, specifically for characters, right? And especially for characters and monsters. But I know I'm not the fastest. I know people that are much faster than me. I know people that are way faster digital painters, right? And they can do more than just characters. They can do all kinds of crazy stuff. David Levy was just up in here, right? David Levy is one of those people, right? He's the types of people that inspired me to be a quick painter, right? I know, I know some of these people. Some of these people are some of my good friends. Um, but I know that I'm just really quick. So I'm amongst the fastest. I might be like in the top 1,000, but that's still a pretty big deal. Right, and uh, and that's that's kind of what I tell my students. Because like, a lot of my students sometimes they're like, "Oh, I can't never do, like, I can't do a painting in under in a half an hour," and I'm like, "Dude, like a lot of people can't. Not even some professionals. Like, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal." Um, and I I think it's really important to understand that if you want to be good at something, you just got to put that time, you got to put that effort into it, um, and you'll become great. If you worry about talent or this kind of oh, well, the advantages and disadvantages of others, I think it's just a distraction, right? That's really it's just a huge distraction, and try not to get distracted by that stuff. Yeah, yeah, believe it, believe it, believe what it. The fuck? <laughs> well, that was like yeah, that we, was like totally we, we brought Naruto in here. Naruto's up in here. What's up, Naruto? How you doing? <laughs> what the? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, Naruto? How you how you doing with the nine tails? How does that go? I'm doing great. Cool, Naruto. Um, so, <laughs> have you have you been trying out the Tinder? Have you been seeing nice ladies lately? What's going on? You know, you were talking. Believe it. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that voice, man. Believe it. Watching Naruto, it's so good. Yeah, it's a good. I show. watched it up to like the bridge part where they fight the people on the bridge, but it's like real inspiring for killed children. Killing children? Whoa! For, for killing Whoa. children. Children on a bridge. <laughs> what what? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's like two significant times they fight on a bridge. There's the one in the first anime, and then there's the one in the Shippuden. I don't know. All right, I got 25. The first time. All right, hold the on. The first time they fought on a bridge. Let's get a couple of these questions in. Okay. All right. Um, let me make sure. Uh, somebody asked what were the names of the movie series we were talking about earlier we talked about uh, what was it there was Deep and oh, then uh, TV shows what was the one before that and uh, Silicon Valley uh, Silicon Valley yeah okay cool. and then Patrick said he missed the beginning of the stream where do I join the community thing oh just message uh, either Kaylin or John or Mike and then they'll hook you up right probably, now probably probably Mike because I still don't know what I'm doing <laughs> uh, then yeah. I'll say Kaylin <laughs> Just so you can teach this fool. If you want to roll the dice, you'll message me. No, <laughs> roll, the roll the dice. <laughs> Let's do it. We just talked about talent. Kalen's not talented at Discord. Somehow, so the I only way, it. yeah, the only way to get Kalen talented at Discord was to make him do it. There it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of your talent. Let's embrace kill. it. Yeah, embrace well, it. Well, because I told Danny, I was like, "Yeah, Believe man, you it. have to sign up," and he's like, "I do." The link you said I, had, I do have to sign up. I was like, "Oh, my bad." Yeah, you just making you like it's not going to just be like some random anonymous. Danny, oh. if you're still in here, just do it. It's not, it's not you're not selling your soul, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He said he just wanted to come and say what's up. He didn't want to. I think he's oh, busy. Okay. Busy doing. doing I'll, I'll hook him up later then, dude. You, you guys and your technology fear, man. It's so weird. Embrace it, dude. This is like it's so hard to get you guys to like. Yeah, what is this stuff? We were having to hang out with John for a second. John was like, I hate this already. John had like three accounts at some point. Yeah, we're like, dude, like, what why? why? I'm just, I'm, just uh, I'm running it as a, you know, a person that doesn't know much about technology, their perspective. Like my like my mom, you know, like if she joined in, you know, I bet be you, easy for her to I bet she should have joined in really easily. And Probably. I'll laugh. <laughs> Oh, really? freak. Helen, jump in. Okay, let me see how to. It oh, <laughs> it's really easy. Look, I just gotta click this and sign up. Okay. Oh, look, wow. you can see who's online. Uh, oh, now I can uh, check on on John <laughs> anytime now. The convenience of it. The convenience I, I of it. Up. I admit it. I oh, screwed. I can private message my little boy. Yeah, <laughs> I can private message your little Johnny boy. Stop. Hey, Stop. Johnny. Stop it. 
I know Helen. She's a sweetheart. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, somebody asked you at what po- at this point do you have an overall idea of what you're doing, uh, like what do you want to draw, or are you just going with the flow? Um, abstract monster thingies that I can keep painting for future demos. That's what, kind of what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna what I'm gonna probably do is take some of these and just paint them. And so that, with that being said, I need to be a lot more abstract. I had that epiphany earlier, but I keep avoiding it for whatever reason. Anyway, um, yeah, I have some some sense of what's going on here. Uh, Harris said, "How do how do you stream Photoshop on YouTube? You could look up OBS, Open Broadcast Software, on These YouTube or coming. Facebook. Well, you can stream to YouTube, but we are on Facebook. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's a weird question to ask on a Facebook stream. That's why he might have miswrote. Um, but OBS, there's a link. Um, all I did for anyone who's curious." is uh, Google. Like, this is software. Look it up. This is really cool technology that's out there. It's just a search engine. Now, what the search engine does is you type something in, and it pretty much will find you anything. Now, you can't trust every link, so you have to kind of dig deep and do a little research, but uh, it's pretty It's pretty cool. I highly, uh, you should Google sarcasm, too, while you're at it. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like... Uh, uh, I feel I feel like a lot of people just don't Google stuff. They just don't. And um, I, I highly recommend, like, you, you might be surprised. Like, even things that you don't think you can Google, like uh, how to paint, like how to paint a guitar. Just something random, right? How to paint a guitar. Just Google it up. And then method four, painting your guitar. So now this is like how to paint an actual guitar, right? So how to... How... To do a painting of a guitar. There you go. We're starting to get something somewhere. Oh, look at these images. And this is all I really have done. I, I feel like if I were to say that I have any real talent, you know what I mean? It's in my Google searches, man. That I'm like resilient to an end. I will keep looking until I find the video that I need or some sort of information that I need. And if it doesn't exist, I'll keep still digging I'm like an archaeologist up in this, you know, just keep digging. And yeah, like you'll like, there's like the whole subculture of painting guitars. That I didn't even really realize, which is pretty cool. Actually, I'm probably going to look into that and, and the stuff like that, like great. And I constantly just Google. So all I did was like, how do you stream on Facebook live on your private profile? Um, and I just did that. And I took a bunch of trial and error. I screwed up a lot, but there's a link that you can go to that from there you can just do it it's really simple um, but a lot of other streamers have figured it out and it's really good I'm glad uh, I think I asked, asked did one earlier which is great that was cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, how did Ash figure it out did you did you teach him yeah I assisted him yeah see but, I mean Friendships. it was all stuff that we could all figure out on yeah cause Google. John just asked me and I just sent him a Google yeah. link and then he went from there and he figured it out on his own and then um, I know Ash is one of those types of guys too. Says, I don't want to deal with technology, <laughs> even though he is like <laughs> he really the, is. even though he has like the most freaking powerful computer. I know. Like, it's I'm like a, curious, it's a waste. You hear like... me, Ash? If you're listening to me, it's a waste on you. <laughs> Give me your computer. <laughs> you know? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But like he, <laughs> he's just he's just like always so standoffish about new tech, and this is why, man. Why not, dude? Like your uh, IP, right? Last Boys is like all about embracing like like a pocket book to tech, and it's cool, dude. Just love it, love it. <laughs> but he he, you know what it is? He's like he's stubborn at first, but then he comes around and he's like ends up loving it, right? Yeah. And then he's like he's really big on that kind of stuff. All of a sudden, he starts off like oh, I don't know about this bullshit, and then he gets into it and he becomes the best at it. <laughs> and so I can't get too mad at it. But I will get mad at him just a little bit because he has a super powerful computer. It's when Skynet takes over, his computer is going to be the first robots that <laughs> that be converted into a robot and machine soldier. Yeah. So you. Powerful. It's super powerful. Um. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, just Google stuff, guys. It's it's a shock what's out there, man. There's all kinds of tools and softwares. I mean, even like when I started the whole Gumroad stuff, right? Like, I uh, I just was like, is there, like, anything online that allows you to do stuff? And there was a bunch. There's, like, payloads. There was, um, 
What was the other one? There's a few that I looked into. There's sales? Like, uh, sales was like after. That was oh, like okay. well, I was trying to figure out how to use PayPal. On And pay, sales was a, 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 like a alternative. It was basically Gumroad, but you can use PayPal. Right? Oh, I forgot timing myself. Timing myself is keeping me on track. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I just looked it up, Googled it, and I was like, oh, Gumroad seems like the best for creatives, right? So I just did it, you know? And uh, sure enough, you know, it became a huge thing now. People love Gumroads, right? And Gumroads are a really cheap alternative to tutorials, and a lot of, like, creative people are doing it, you know? And it's really good and really, really, really cool. Uh, Patreon, for, for instance, has been around for a while, too. It's been around for quite a while. And in, uh, only recently have people found out that it was very popular. I mean, there's some really amazing uh, stuff on there, too. But, like, a lot of people are just, you know... They just want to, like, they just want to kind of have somebody explain it to them, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. There really isn't. Like, a lot of times yeah. I want people to tell me how to do stuff, too. But mm-hmm. if no one, like, but here's kind of the thing. Like, if no one tells you, though, like, how else are you going to get that information, right? So you, yeah. you got to be also proactive. It's nice to have people that can tell you, but it's also very uh, important to kind of be the one that looks for it for yourself. Um, like, for instance, uh, case in point, Discord. I wasn't looking into this, but Mike told me about it. I was like, all right, so I tried it out, and I was like, now I love it. I was like, Discord's mm-hmm. awesome. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of new and cool stuff, right? Uh, who's in this Discord right now? Is any, oh, there's a lot of people up in here. Yeah, I mean, we Whoa! Got some people invited. Everyone's to super polite, too. Not, uh, not, to, oh, by the way, Tom, if you look, you're, uh, one of the only people that is epic in this, uh, in this, because you uh, completed the challenge. Because right? you completed the challenge. So anyone else who can do the 250. And you only keep your title if you keep doing challenges. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you just got to complete yeah. one challenge and you were considered epic. That's so you're cool. epic. I love that. So I'm not even epic. And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm going to try to be epic. One, two. I think oh, I, I need to be n- numbering these. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think I'll be able to do 250, though. Um, you should give the admins a color. I want a color. Nope. Two, Why does three, he get four, a color? Because he's doing because all you're doing is just being admin. You're not doing Aww. anything important. He like all accomplished all to it. Moderating stuff. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna oh no I'm gonna <laughs> depromote <laughs> you ungrateful. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, get the I shouldn't have spoke up. Yeah, you know what? Kale's gonna get the hoodie. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> oh no, my hoodie. Yeah, I can give I can give you I can give us yes. color. I didn't want your hoodie anyway. Yeah. They what? Right now, I want to have. All right, let's see. What's <laughs> a good lie, color yeah. for admins? Watch, what watch what color you want? Ugliest thing ever. And I'm like, I'm still gonna wear it though. Kayla, do you legit want the hoodie? Are you like serious? <laughs> he, <Not> does. Really. <laughs> he does. He does. Want it he's, it's funny because like... it's like because so, it's funny because you want it because like, I said that I want it. Everyone's like, what? No, I want it. Like, no one really cares about a hoodie. But as soon as I said that I want it, everyone's like, no, that's mine. No, I, I wanted it. It's just as soon as we brought it up, you immediately. <laughs> yeah, nobody had an opportunity. Even it was like it was obviously a given that He's I was like, going to get one. Obviously, dibs. Dibs on the yeah, but you just like immediately. There you go. We're gold. Every time Bam. I hang out with AJ, I'm just going to wear it. <laughs> I dig it. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, I meant meant say your line. You're always right. There we go. <laughs> there Believe we go. it. Yeah, who what else? Is who who is in this uh, Discord that's in the stream? Well, we who? got Brian. Brian, what's uh, up? Say hello. If you don't have a mic, you don't have to say hello. <clears throat> if you don't want to talk to us, you're like, I don't want to talk. I just want to listen to you live in the spur of the moment. Because there's a huge delay. In uh, he streams. doesn't have a mic. Oh, that's all right. No mic. That's all right, man. Yeah, you know what? Uh, can you? Us? Yeah, can you kick him out? It'll be our first uh, ban. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kick them out. You know, there's there's a first for everything. So uh, let's uh, figure this out. No, just kidding. Welcome. Who else is in here <laughs> that joined from the stream? I'm not so sure because it's hard to tell between who was already here and who's new. Okay. Uh, is, has Red Fleet been here before? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't sound familiar. Could be new guy. Or new gal. Well, welcome. Or yeah. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Seems like we have okay, we got somebody numbers. named H. Cherry. Oh, oh, we hear something. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. 
you can't really talk because I'm in a cafe, though. So after this, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> just just tell everybody in the cafe to shut up and then just keep talking. There's a there's a YouTube video of Dennis Quaid. Like he, I forget what show he was on. I think it was on Ellen. And uh, Ellen had like a mic. Oh, I'm not timing myself. This is why it's okay. It's taking me too much time. Um, and Ellen basically had a mic and would like talk into the mic and he would have to like say whatever she, she told him. And he was at like a Starbucks or whatever. And then she was like, all right, just say, I'm Dennis Quaid. Like really loud. And he's like, I'm Dennis Quaid. <laughs> he just like <laughs> shouts it. And people are just like, what the? <laughs> Super pretentious celebrity. He's like, and he's like, listen to me. I'm Dennis Quaid. I'm Dennis Quaid. <laughs> Listen to me. That's cool. Listen to me. I'm Dennis Quaid. And, just, <laughs> and it is Dennis Quaid. It's so funny. Yeah. So I imagine that's, that's the same scenario with this guy. Just tell everybody to shut up. Hey, shut up, everyone. I'm like in the stream. It's important. Yeah, welcome, man. Yeah, welcome to the community. Hang out with people. Oh, no, I'm from, uh, I'm from your class. Yeah. Oh. Randall. Yeah. Oh, hey, what's up, Randall? Yeah. Get to yeah, work. What are you doing? Maybe. What are you doing? Get back to work. Okay. <laughs> Busted. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, any other questions? Nah, not really. No, okay, well, cool. I mean, there's some stuff. Uh, the Discord chat is only for AJ students. We've already answered that. I just answered it in the comments. Um, oh, I see. Else? Um, yeah, the Discord is for anybody, really, that's an artist that wants to, you know, look, like, anybody can join. Um, but like the way that we're doing it, like I said earlier in the stream, is we're like invite kind of only, like we're inviting people just uh, manually, you know, that way we have control over it. So it's like, I want it to be a public thing, but it's like not that public where it's like, you can just come in and come out because if we leave it really open, it could be overwhelming, but this way we can, can control like the, the amount of people that are coming in. So, uh, because there might be enough, there might be too much eventually, and we might know what that looks like, and it would be better to just invite people, you know, within reason. Or just create more channels or create a subset, you know. We'll, we'll have to talk across that bridge when we get there. But uh, I think that making the separate channels is the best way to handle that problem once yeah. we get there. It's not too difficult. Like make a maximum amount of people for, per Can you channel. do that? I'm sure you can. I mean, we, the mod the uh, admins can just in, by inviting like we'll just put the uh limit if really? we see like 200 or if we see 200 people in there then we'll just stop inviting <laughs> in the in that channel yeah wow i didn't and know that we'll that's great a new channel that's sending cool. out 10 invites got a lot of messages oh great yeah yeah again the rules are very simple don't be a dick that's it. Um, I'm starting to even realize the voice channel thing. There might only need to be one real voice channel um, for now. But I think maybe as we're adding more people, it might make sense to actually have. Because I realized that the voice channel, like I was in the gaming one the other day, and everyone just jumped into the gaming one. And I wasn't really gaming. I just happened to, I was going to game. I was going to play um, the game that I'm working on just to get some more notes on it. And then I ended up just doing the work that I needed to do for it instead. And then uh, mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm not really gaming. But I just stayed there anyway because it seemed weird to just switch to working <laughs> and just abandon everybody. Like, all right, guys, peace out, losers. Because everyone else is working in there too. Free open uh, beta for me? Yeah, I think so. I think I can. Do it. I'll try that game out. Uh, okay. I'm still trying to give a couple of students some access to it too. It's just slow burning. Okay. The studio is not too big, so it's not going to yeah. happen right away. But I would like that. Then you and I could play it and we could talk about it. And you can give me mm -hmm. some feedback on what you think. Um, because it's 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 a community built game too. Like they're really building on the idea of like letting the community in, which is a great idea. We have talked about uh, doing some of the concepts. Like I was going to put some of the concepts online for people to vote on, you know, and that'd be really cool. So like you could kind of vote. Like imagine like if Overwatch decided to release uh, like different designs for Sombra, but they haven't modeled it yet. They're like you know these are the ideas. What do you guys think? You know, in terms of visuals. Mm -hmm. And letting the audience kind of have that gauge. It'd probably make more sense actually for skins, not so much for the character design for a game like that. Because for, for the, our game, it's easier because it's like our game is, it is kind of like about having customizable things and stuff. You know? Like, it's it's not like a bad idea to get the 
consumer involved. But like again with Overwatch, it kind of would be because like you have to design like everything, not just like everything really matters. Because once you put the character in the game, it changes the balance of everything. All right, so you can't just be like, "What do you guys think of this guy that have it's the have a backwards hat?" It's oh great, I really like it. It's like oh, but it destroys everything because this character is broken as hell because of his backwards hat. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'll see what's up. See what's up, homie. Do it. Got a question. Cool. AJ, what do you think about the trend towards ma- remake in movies? Uh, I don't really care. I mean, it doesn't affect me whether they do it or not. I just either watch them or don't. Um, and the the trend of remaking movies is a very uh, new trend in the last several last few decades, right? Because there was a time where movies there was no movies but even if you think about like the movies like think about Disney like if you really like look into all the earlier films like they were kind of just remakes of old stories weren't they right like Snow White yeah. like they didn't invent Snow White or Cinderella or Beauty and the Beast like these aren't original IPs <laughs> you know these are all just stories that already existed they just animated you know um, so there was a moment where that was a thing, and then popular, uh, but but those are all classics. Like we would not say those are terrible, right? Those are all like classics: Aladdin, um, Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella, Snow White, um, like all those. Robin Hood, like, classic films, you know. So it, I don't really care. Like if it's good, it's good. That's the only way I, I I look at it. If it's a good movie, it's a good movie. If it happens to be a remake of a movie, then great. You know, if it's not. Then, like, okay, you know, like, if it's a good film, it's a good film. I'm a big fan of original ideas, but I'm also just, if it's a good thing. There's some movies that I thought were original, but then I found out it was, like, a book or it was, like, a story that was already told, you know? Like, um, you know, Game of Thrones, everyone loves Game of Thrones, but that was, you know, that's that TV show is basically a re-envisioning of what the books were, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like... Um, people were like losing their minds over the books. I mean, there's a huge fan base for the books, which, you know, led to why people wanted the books to be into a TV show in the first place. But it just wasn't. And the Harry Potter, you know, a lot of films even, right? Like The Shining was a book, Stephen King book, right? Jurassic Park was a, a book, right? Like these are literally like remakes. Yeah. They're remaking it. It just happens to be... But I, I guess like maybe it would... What, people are bothered by is like the next step level remaking right like then remaking again right maybe then it's kind of like you're getting a little bit of like backwash of a story if that makes sense right i can, I can understand that sentiment but you know uh there's been movies that have been remade from older movies that i genuinely thought were okay you know i thought they were fine so i'd say uh, for me it doesn't matter i don't really my opinion is uh whatever uh, I just w- prefer watching it, and if it's not good, then it's not good. If it's good, it's good. I think I, I like. I'm a big fan of judging, but for my myself, not letting others necessarily give me criticism what they think. I like. I listen to my friends' opinions. For instance, like if John watches a movie or something, or plays a video game, and he tells me about it, uh, I take his opinion very seriously. You know, because I trust his opinion. Him and I have very similar ideals of what we think is really great. You know, yeah, not, bitch. All, not all the time, but mostly, right? So if he's like, "Oh, I saw this movie," yeah, like, really got to see it. Then I'll be, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna go really see it." Yeah, and vice versa. But like, you know, popular websites and stuff that, like, Rotten Tomatoes, for instance, I don't really care for Rotten Tomatoes because there's some movies on there that I really love that Rotten Tomatoes get like a sixty percent or something. And I was like, "What?" Mm-hmm. I was like, "No way." No, I I really stopped watching like trailers of movies. Like, um, you know, big movies that I'm really interested in, like Star Wars, you know. Uh, I'll still watch, like, small trailers from, like, life, you know. Yeah. But when it comes to, like, big projects that I've always adored, I think it's time to just stop watching trailers, you know. Just watch the movie from the beginning and well, stop listening to the reviews. You know what the, the natural progression of that is? Is just stop watching movies in general, like me. No, nope, well, you're wrong. Yeah, I want to watch a movie though. No, 
I think uh, watching this is a tra- such a stupid idea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think watching um, trailers. Okay, I need to change. I need to watch movies. I think watching <laughs> trailers is fine if you don't like keep watching. I think you're right, right? Like, if you watch the first or second one. Yeah. Like you get you get to know it's coming out. For mm-hmm. instance, like for Rogue One, sure. I haven't watched anymore. I just kind of just like I yeah, know it's coming out. Uh, I don't really care. I, I want to watch it now. Like a lot of people have their opinions. Some people are loving it. Some people are hating it. Like mm-hmm. closer friends of mine that have access to these types of things. Um, I'll, I'll find out when I when I see it. You know. Yeah. That's really how I look at it. And I feel the same way about remakes and stuff. Like, you know, it's it's like this. If you're tired of something, like, you're tired of, like, oh, they keep making remakes. I'm tired of it. Be then, right back. then be the person that makes the, the non-remakes. You know? Like, take it in your own hands. It's not easy. Set an example. Yeah, set the example. Is that Randall? Is that what that is? It's John. John, anyway. I can hear you. Um, somebody asked, are you using some sort of lazy mouse pug- plug-in? I see your cursor move ahead of the line. Uh, that's probably just some de- delay of just the stream. Um, no, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just, I'm just drawing. I'm just drawing. Right. Yeah, that's about it for the questions. But I, I think I've invited like 15 people to the Discord already. Well, that's Maybe cool. more. Yeah, I keep getting messages. Great. Here, let me count these. See where I'm at right now. I'm gonna start numbering these. I should have done this a long time ago. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you guys have any more questions, please ask. Yeah, we can hear you, Joe. We could hear everything you say. Sorry. Earlier. Yeah, your racist comments. Alex was telling me about uh, that art station posted your video, I guess. Oh, cool. Did you know that? Oh, uh, yeah, I did, actually. On um, YouTube. What's his name? Um, my buddy Larry showed it to me, which is cool. I posted yeah. it on the Discord for other people to check it out. Sweet deal. Yeah. 16, 17. That's so long ago. It's yeah, crazy. it's old. It's like a, like a year and a, a few months old, man. It's crazy old. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25... 27 this hamburger one I love it 28 29 30 31 32 33 is Caitlin sitting here playing Street Fighter (laughs) yeah he's probably 36 37 38 39 40. So I got 10 more to go. All right. Uh, I noticed that they're getting smaller and smaller <laughs> from where I originally started. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll take like one or two more questions, and then I'm going to do some studying, which I'll, uh, I'll I'll stop the stream for a bit, and then I'll like bring up the stream again and then start studying. So if you guys want to watch that, it's going to hang out with the square people for a little bit. Or actually, I don't know if I'll stream that. I might just make it private. Just hang up. Yeah. yeah. So that way I don't have any pressure. I can stop whenever I want. Because um, I also need to do some work soon. Anyway. I think there's a, uh, maybe four questions now. Oh, wow. That just came up. Cool. Okay. So, guys? Uh, Going to go get the style frame event. Wait, hold on. Question. Gonna go get the style frames event. What do you think I should focus on learning from the speakers and such? Oh, go to the style frames event. My bad. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I've never heard that. But um, what what do you think they should focus on if they went to an event like that? Uh, whatever the whatever event you go to, I would recommend just <laughs> taking as many notes or mental notes and physical notes as possible. Just like constantly, just pay attention. Uh, to the people that are talking to you and people that are talking at you, like, you know, like giving the workshop. Uh, I usually say, you know, take all the stuff that you hear to with a grain of salt because sometimes people, for instance, uh, I have students that would go and show their portfolio and one group of people will tell them that they need more of this and another group of people will tell them they need more of this, you know? And they're just like, what do I do? Like, who's right? And I was like, they're both right. 
but they're also both wrong. Anytime someone tells you like need one of one thing and like nothing of the other thing, like you should kind of reconsider what they're trying to say to you. And that's what it is, like reconsider and like ask questions about yourself, like why you are taking it so literally or why you're not taking it so literally. Um, and so for me, like a big thing that I like to do is to just like if someone tells me something I analyze why they were telling me in the first place like why are they doing this thing or why are they saying this thing to me at all right and then once they do that then I can have consider all the reasons why they're saying it for instance when people used to tell me that I needed to have more of this in my portfolio or more of that in my portfolio um, what they really are saying that I was really bad and they didn't want to hire me and they didn't know what else to tell me yeah um because if I, I only have one kind of thing in my portfolio, mostly, and people still um, give me work, right? And so it's clear to me that it's because I was just really bad at the time when I was, like, starting out. And so once you start being bad, you'll start getting more uh, genuine criticism, I would think. But uh, I, that's what I did with that piece of advice. Like, when people told me that I need more environments, they were just trying to help me out, trying to give me an opportunity to work and Kalen says it a lot where he says like you know they don't know you like these people don't know you and they don't know what you're capable of you know they only can judge you for you now right and so you have to consider that too you have to consider that people don't know you now right they are just gauging based off of what you are showing them and if you are showing them pretty bad work you know they're going to consider you a bad artist but if you believe that you're capable to be a great artist then you know, you can prove them wrong. So I just, like, say listen to everybody. Like, take all advice. Uh, but don't follow all advice equally. <coughs> I like to say, advice? yeah, if someone were, you know, in America we have an expression that says, you know, uh, let me give you my two cents, which means, like, let me give some advice. Uh, I like that phrase in terms of a way to... Um, way to Value? Yeah, it's a way to consider actual advice of other people. So I take a lot of people's two cents. They give me two cents, I take it, you know? And uh, so that makes me that much richer every time. So I'm like, out of all that, like if I had to say how much money I have in terms of advice that have been given to me over the years, I definitely have thousands of dollars, you know? I've been given a lot of advice through my whole career and my life in general that has helped me and shaped me to to be the where I'm at today. Yeah. Good way, good way of saying it. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I haven't heard it that way. That's great. Yeah, because if you if you think of it otherwise, like sometimes students are like, oh, this like person doesn't know what they're talking about. It's like, well, they, there's a reason why they said the things they said. You know, they're not entirely wrong, right? But I understand that some people might not be, you know, and, and I mean like genuine advice too. Like if people are maliciously like calling you a moron or something like that, that's not advice. That's just being mean, right? But if they're, like, giving you advice, but it doesn't sound like good advice, like, it sounds like they don't know what they're talking about, but, like, try to ask yourself, why are they saying that, though? Like, why are they saying those words to you, you know? And you'll you'll become a wiser person for that, versus just, like, they don't know what they're talking about. They shut up, you know? Like, uh, I was watching um, uh, Jim Gaffigan talk about, like, Trump supporters, and he was like, you know, we had to stop calling these people morons, because it's like... That's not how you reason with somebody. If you disagree with them, you don't tell them they're an idiot. You know, you don't tell them that they don't know what they're talking about. They're not going to listen to you after something like that, right? You got to talk to them. You got to listen to why they want to do the things they want to do. You got to listen to what they're saying to you, um, so that way you can you can find a reason why you think they are wrong or why you disagree with them. And maybe you'll find more things in common than you will find things not in common, right? And then that, that common ground is what makes people, that's what convinces people, not like telling them that they're idiots and they don't know what they're talking about. You know, being reasonable so, and helpful. It's a lot like Overwatch. Yeah, don't listen to John's advice, though. <laughs> <laughs> there are some people you should just not listen to. And <laughs> John's kidding. one of those people. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Choosing your characters. Yeah, that's how we win our games, why. too, right? Like, I remember, like, we would have a few matches, right? I remember there was one time that me and Mike were playing, and then, like, uh, I think Mike was saying something about, like, because, like, it was one of our own players. They were, like, they didn't change. I think it was Kui. Like, Kui didn't change to from Bastion, right? 
Mm-hmm. And Queen's our friend. Like, he's a good friend of ours, right? And uh, he's a really good guy, a really cool person. And uh, we, I think we lost the game because he didn't switch out of Bastion. But, you know, uh, I think Michael's coming in his defense. He's like, oh, dude, like, like, like you know, that guy is like, you know, not that understanding what he's what the point is like we could have done it we should have like, no i think it was that if Kui would have switched we would have done better and it yeah. wasn't that i was mad at Kui or i was like oh never invite him again again in the game it's just that we weren't uh we weren't responsible right? we didn't like say hey you know maybe we should change you mm-hmm. know? and i would have been able to and mike would have been able to convince him to not that guy but we would have been the guy was right he was just really aggressive about it you know his his words weren't clearly not falling <laughs> falling down lightly if that makes sense but like he was right you know and it was it was everyone's fault for kind of not managing that and working around that but it's a yeah. game so it's like I don't care we lost like I lose games <laughs> all the time you know I'm not gonna like uh, you know be like you know Kui we're never gonna play again because of that <laughs> yeah. it's like no of, of course I'm gonna play with them again you're done kid you're yeah done. but it's like and I remember even after t- t- talking to Mike I was like yeah I think you're right and Mike was like yeah actually you're right because, like, after he was able to kind of, like, oh, you know what? Yeah. Like, objectively speaking, you know. Uh, but it's not like, who cares? Like, there's been instances where I played the wrong character for too long, right? And then it's like, we've all done it, right? Mm-hmm. And we all, like, and that's why we lose and stuff like that. Uh, I remember, I forgot, I think it was you, it was Mike, Jeff, and someone else was in there. And I was telling them, like, who they should play more of because I was looking at their rates and I was doing the math. And I was like, yeah, Mike. Like John should never play me again. Yeah, it's like, John, according to your stats at the time, like, you you win statistically way more with Farah. Like, you have, like, it's like a night and day compared to every other character. And I, I did, but I did that for everybody, right? I did that for uh, uh, Mike. And Mike was really good with me, actually. Um, unfortunately, I'm sorry, Mike. Your Widowmaker is not, uh, <laughs> statistically <laughs> speaking, no. statistically speaking, in, is in not. Quick play, it's my highest, right? Yeah, in quick play. I know, sure. Quick play. Yeah, yes, sure. Yes. So statistically, statistically it's not, it's it's not that good. So me, for statistically, the two characters that I have to play if we want to win is, um, and you guys already know, is uh, Zenyatta. Zenyatta and Lucio in that order, right? Like, I, any other character is just, like, fucking garbage. <laughs> it's like, there's no way. Like, I am clearly the support character, right? Um, and so so I, I was just looking at that because I think that's a good thing to take advantage of because, you know, we play games where people want to, like, tell people what to play, you know? And, like, and it's, like, it's unjustified if you don't know the numbers, right? It's, like, it's because everybody wants to go off a of feeling, right? Everybody wants to go off a of feeling. It's like, I feel good, though, with this character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's a name for this. Like in Magic the Gathering, they have three different names. I forget. It's like Timmy, Johnny, and like, I forget the third one. Let's just say Simon. Right? And uh, like, I don't know the exact order either, but I'll just explain it. Uh, basically, one player uh, doesn't care how to win. And that's me, right? Like, we'll, we'll play the game and play whatever needs to be played at all costs, right? And in Magic, it's basically build like he doesn't. That person doesn't even matter if it's if it's his deck or her deck, like like they didn't even design it. Like someone else designed it, but they just play it better than them. Like they don't care. Like that's something that is like a real thing that some players really embrace. Like they love playing just to win, right? And then you have the other player who makes like the a really cool green and red deck. Right, and this is in the case of Overwatch. It's like playing that character they really like, you know, like Widowmaker, for mm-hmm. instance, with Mike, you know. Um, so they can win two out of the ten games that they play, you know, with that deck that they like, and feel much happier than pl- like winning eight out of the ten games with the other character that they're best suited for, like the, with a better deck in this instance, you know. Yeah, like they'll feel better winning. Uh, even if they lose more, they feel better winning with the, the the cards that they want to play. Does that make sense? And that's a player type. And then there's another player type who only likes to win. It doesn't matter what kind of deck they're playing, but they like to play it with a deck that's like really bizarre. Does it makes sense, like something that nobody would expect anybody would play, like a you know a really off the chart strategy. Like so, for instance, like a with uh, like uh, Overwatch, a good example would probably would be like if like we were trying to do. Remember, we were trying to do that like uh, all attack kind of team in like, a few like yeah. one tank. Like like uh, we weren't 
I was really attached to that. But like, if we were that player type, then we would keep trying until it worked, right? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And so, like, recognizing the kind of player type you are is an advantage, I think, if you're playing like a game that requires you to use teamwork and strategy. Just like League of Legends. Just like League of Legends, because then then you can cater to your strengths. You you'll play that support. You'll play that role because you know it's about winning the, the thing. <laughs> Um, but then you can also be objective and be like, I like playing Widowmaker. That's that's all it is. It's not that I'm the best with her. It's not that I like think she's the best character. I just like playing her, right? I know she's powered. There's and is that the the troll category? Well, like is, the, yeah. the the troll player, like the player that just likes to troll. That just likes to play something that's like annoying. <laughs> yeah, I think that's just like a, a that fits in that third player type. You know, the person that likes to play strategy that's like unsuspected. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah low tier yeah but like there's like all kinds of like you can associate this with almost all kinds of games too right like it doesn't just stay with uh, magic just magic just happens to put a name on it and understand that and whenever they make new sets for their uh, card game they consider this you know are they making cards more for this player or for that player and i think you know to try to find a way to segue this to art i think the same way applies to like whenever people are like oh should i use 3d or not like there's some people like me who are really like to be technical i like i i like to be a very technical artist i like to do things on a very high level right and that's like something that i really embrace but then you look at someone like tyson tyson murphy like he's on emotional level like he really likes to make art that really makes people feel good when they look at it right yeah. like not like necessarily like it, it is good artwork he he just happened to draw it really good but i'm just saying like if it wasn't good he would still get a lot of satisfaction out of it right like if it was just impacts people in fact a lot of his paintings that he loves the most are the ones that have something to say about him and, and his family and the people he loves right his talk he gave was really good yeah, and he's like he's clearly that kind of person. And I'm like the kind of person that like when I learned a guitar, like even though I was playing pop punk, I was like listening to like metal bands and Ingwai Malmsteen and Steve Vai because I wanted to be a good guitar player too, you know. And then and then I would say like if there was like a third category of artist would be like an artist that doesn't care at all um, what they're doing as long as they can you know do it, right? <laughs> Like, they can be doing art that is just, like, super technical or art that's just super, um, like, emotional, you know? And obviously you have hybrids of the two and all the stuff like that are the three. But, like, there's some people that just, they can care less about whether the art is good, like, like on a technical level, as long as they could get paid, right? As long as they make a living from it. And, th- and there's nothing wrong with any of those. Like, there's some people, like, like, I like to be technical and all that stuff. And if I don't get paid for that, like, if I get... Like, that's, like, not my favorite. I like to really get in there and paint and really get caught up in that world. And I think I've evolved to more of the artist that tries to make artwork that says something, too. You know? Instead of the artist that just makes really cool technical stuff. Uh, And I think I've been doing that recently the last few years. Um, But, you know, I think it's important to kind of know kind of artist you are, too, right? So that way you can kind of strengthen that, sharpen that blade or sharpen that Wacom pen. And then also evolve yourself beyond that. In fact, uh, my boss that I'm working with, like he he's evolved a lot, man. Like, he showed me some design docs of like player types that he discovered in terms of the kind of players that just exist in the game industry in general. And it was really in depth. It was actually pretty enlightening. And I'm not gonna reveal it because I don't think it actually can. But like it's really cool. It's really awesome. And uh, and it's just. Do you guys hear screaming? My kids. Yeah. <laughs> my, there's like a blender going off and my kids screaming. It's not a good combination. Not yeah, it's not a, I don't like that. <laughs> so yeah, I I mean yeah, it's just really cool to kind of look into the, that that type of stuff in psychology of like the kind of person you are. Yeah man. Yeah, man. Any other questions? I know there was a few more, right? What yeah. What were some of the artists that influenced you early on? Uh, Charlie Wen and Ryan Mending, the people from God of War, pretty much like the God of War crew. All those guys were a huge influence for me, for me for a while. Um, and then a lot of traditional artists like Sargent um, and Lindecker was a huge one for me. Lindecker was real big. Rockwell is definitely big too. Uh, Sargent was pretty big too, but Lindecker is probably the 
the most influential artists, I think. But it's a lie if I just said those are the only ones. There's like hundreds of them, man. There's hundreds and hundreds of artists that I really love. Okay. How do you keep your back straight while you work? Oh, sit, sit up straight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there's actually a segment called the better back. Have you ever had that? The wrong. What is that? My answer's right. You're wrong. Uh, here, I'll link you. I actually bought it. It was actually a Kickstarter, and I bought it. I'm actually yeah. using it like right now, actually. And, uh, Look, you asked the right question because we got Kalen. He's got yeah. your back. Yeah. Let me. Yeah, uh, he's got your back. back. <laughs> Kickstarter. Nobody what likes up? my pun. Good. Okay. Here. okay. Uh, <laughs> I give up. Yeah, it's Come on, wait, Min, you got my back, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. It was I'll, pretty uh, good. Gonna You're not gonna say the thing. Yeah, man. Oh my god, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I failed. I just sent it to you. But okay. um, yeah, it's like a little, <laughs> little kind of, it's kind of like a belt or something like that you can kind of wear. Oh, man, look at this. Because um, if I'm not standing, if I don't feel like standing, then I'll use this. Because otherwise, you know, naturally, like, I'll, I'll send the link to you for a little bit, and it kind of stops doing cool. that. So, it's it's it's. Yeah. I think it works pretty well. So I would check it out. If you're Hello, it's very, it's really yeah. small. It's compact. You can fold it up and. Oh, you did. Anywhere. Did you do the two hundred? And fifty. Min. Me. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It should be a little bit more, even. Oh. oh. So then, guess epic. what? You're gonna be epic. Admin Dang. and epic. So where does that put you, though? I guess admin is more valued than epic. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well. All right. You know what? Still golden. Yeah, still gold. Damn. Yeah, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna look at some reference to start studying too. I was gathering some stuff. Um Yeah, good question. Any other questions? Okay. This one was uh worded strangely, but I'm gonna read it. You can like because... just read it, then like Say it the way you think that you person meant it. break it down. Okay. They said, for you guys is important, don't know about the story, spoiler, or how they tell the story is more important in movie, for example. Oh, I think for movies, there's two things that a movie needs to do. And it, can, it, can, it, it doesn't need to do both, but it needs to do one or the other really good for it to be successful. Uh, because a movie is basically moving pictures, right? So it has to do that part really good. Or it has to do the, the movie, other part of it, it tells stories, right? Or some sort, it gives you information, right? So it has to do that really good, okay? And then if you get a movie that can do both, have really good moving pictures and tells a really good story, then I think that's really awesome. Right, and those are very rare, and everybody wants movies to be like that, but it's very rare for that to happen. Excuse me. Um, like Star Wars, for instance, is like a movie that has like really good moving pictures and a pretty good story that you can follow along. It's really reasonable, right? Uh, I think Forrest Gump does a very similar thing. A lot of Spiel Spielberg movies, you know, do that. Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, and then you have movies that just have really good stories. You know, there's not a lot of visual effects, let's say, or a lot of things happening, you know, on screen. Um, a good example is just, like, any kind of drama, right, that's really good. Like, uh, Rocky would be a good one, right? There's not a lot of, like, uh, cinematic, like, you know, we don't think Rocky as, like, a cinematically, in terms of, like, the cinema and the, the cinematography, I mean, there's a lot of good shots, I'm not saying it's bad, but we don't, like, look back at that and think, oh, you know, this is a great cinematic feat right and then you have movies like 2001 Space Odyssey which like I, I don't know what's going on or even Akira right which is like a visual spectacle but it doesn't need like a very deep and hard hitting story if that makes sense right in fact a lot of movies like a lot of people say you know visual effects don't make the movie you know like uh, you know you can't, like, visual effects alone is not enough. Like, no, it is. There's movies that live just only mm -hmm. on visual effects, and you go watch them just because they're so freaking visually amazing to watch. But it's like, again, that's really hard to do if that's the only thing that you're relying on. And if you're relying on story, then that's also, you have to have a very compelling story if that's the only thing you're relying on. So most movies try to get a little bit of both, you know? 
uh, but usually more heavy on one side out of the other. Like, so if you think of Forrest Gump, it's like a good mixture of both, right? They have like really cool war scenes and stuff like that, but it's really hitting heavy on the story side. Uh, Saving Private Ryan is like another, like it's hitting more on the story side. There's a lot of visual stuff, but it's not a lot. Like it's like the beginning is really intense, you know? But most of it's just them talking and walking and talking and walking, and then bam, like epic war scene, then talking and walking and talking. But when those epic war scenes come, since there's so far few in between, it's like they're probably, they hit harder, you know? And so, uh, yeah, but then there's movies that are like mostly visual effects and just like a roller coaster ride the whole way through. And then some story, like Avatar, for instance, right? Like every <laughs> second, you're just like, your eyes are full of just eye candy, you know? <laughs> And so it's it's hard to do either or, and it's hard to do both. And so you know, I, I don't get too disappointed if a movie is like mostly a visual. Like if a movie claims that it's going to be like you know, like a movie like Speed, it's like we're going to just throw cars at you and things are going to explode. It's going to be awesome, right? Then I want it to be awesome. I, I expect every moment to be you know, like really cool, you know. Um, but if like there's sometimes when that happens, like for for instance with Pacific Rim. Like, that's the problem, I think, with Pacific Rim was trying to have, like, a little that depth story, you know, a little bit. And I don't think it needed it. I think it just needed more monsters punching robots and robots punching monsters, you know. And uh, and that, that's all it needed to do. And it would if it would have done that, it would, I think it would have done even better here in the West. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's, that's my opinion about that, based off my observations. Phew. All right. So that I mean, there was questions after that, but yeah, we well, answer those. You want to take those too? I'm gonna do a couple more, and then we'll we'll end it there. We'll just say that's it. Okay, because we'll I it. I comment like random questions here, and then I, we get more questions after that. Yeah. Oh, okay, this is for real though. We're verbalizing okay. it now. Um, Anthony, do you think it's better to have a bit of everything in your portfolio, like creatures, character renders, perspective, vehicle drawings, blueprints, etc.? Or better to focus on a few things. Uh, I can answer that quickly. I've answered this many times before. I'll just say focus. Uh, this doesn't mean that you can never go back and try other stuff, but you should try to get good at something first and then come back to the others. Be a master, a jack of all trades, but a master of one. Chia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. J Jacob asked, any anyone have tips for using the correct color profile that is versatile for print and web? Don't want to start a huge painting and then it not show up well. Any CMYK, right? It's pretty reliable. Okay. CMYK. Yeah. Um, how do I push myself to work more hours without burning myself out? Uh, just schedule time to work more. And uh, just do it, add, add it inch by inch, like add a half an hour here and there. You know, if you're, let's say you're putting four hours in, add a half an hour. So you do four and a half hours. And then do that for like a week or a month. Like take time like earning it. Like you might find days where you don't do it or you might realize there's bad timing. You know, you got you don't schedule you didn't schedule yourself correctly. Um, so give yourself time and opportunity to make mistakes with that and then once you learn more about when you can add that half an hour, then once that's then uh, set into place, then move on to the adding another one and another one. And I would say I, I encourage people and Tom is one of those people Right. If you're in here, Tom, you can speak for yourself. Like, you were one person that I think it was, like, doing 12 hours, right, for my class at one moment, like, every day. And I was, like, knock it down to 10. And then you're, like, all right. And then knock it down to 8, right? And you got it down to, I think it was 6 or 7 hours. And you are doing just as good. You are doing just as great work, um, even though you're working less. Because I believe there's a, there's a working too much, too. Right? So there's like a good balance of working enough, uh, but also not too much. Uh, I, I fell into that category where I was working too much. Any thoughts, Tom? He <laughs> unmuted his mic, so. Can't hear you if you're talking. You know what? Let's remove his epicness. He's not even that epic. <laughs> We're, it's a wild west here. Like, one mistake. You get demoted <laughs> all the way down to zero. <laughs> yeah, his mic isn't working, it seems. Yeah, is it? Is it working now? Oh, there yeah, it is. There you go. Hello. Hello, governor. I know. Hello. His, his accent is so charming. <laughs> I love it. Get a room. Thanks, man. 
<laughs> All right, let's go to the the chat room above this one. <laughs> I'm gonna make a, a room. Just call it a room. And where people room. just make out with each other. <laughs> Digitally make out. All right, Tom. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'm now on eight hours a day. A kind of trying not to go over that, and it's definitely it's something that you can kind of keep up easier long term. And I think that's that's the key, isn't it? I mean, it's doing yep. something that you can just keep going and keep going. Um, but, you know, it varies day to day. Some days I'll do a little bit more, some days I'll do a little bit less. But as long as it's keeping things are kind of, you know, on balance, I think that's the that's the big thing. Yeah, consistency. Right. Sweet. I, I okay. don't think it's about working more. I think it's just about working often and consistently. That's a better way of looking at it. Somebody asked, "What challenge is this for?" Uh, the fifty thumbnails. Well, I, I I challenge my students to do two hundred and fifty thumbnails in a week, and uh, I think Tom did it and Min did it, and some other. There's the days aren't over, so there's still people that can do it. And then uh, for me, um, uh, I just did fifty because I said I was going to do it. And then I think that the dynamic one, we're doing dynamic environments and characters. And I think what people were posting were good. But I, I think another thing you guys should consider is not just like like triangles and dynamic shapes. I'm thinking also like perspective. Like look, all these perspectives are really simple. Like try like some crazy three-point perspective stuff. You know, don't, don't just keep it to really, really standard uh, perspective stuff. Like really challenge yourself for anyone who's going to do the environment. Look at them crazy shapes. <laughs> what? Min test. Why are you testing? You just wanted to see your gold name? Is that all you wanted to do? <laughs> just wanted to see it? Like, hey, 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 I'm so cool. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you could have done that in the admin, you fool. Now you oh tainted this. I'm going to delete this stupid <laughs> comment. Stupid. Do it. <laughs> I did it. You're not a boss of me. <laughs> um... Anyway, all right. Well, that's it, guys. I'm gonna stop it here. I went a little over than I was expecting, but uh, all right. I appreciate everybody just hanging out. All the people that are in the Discord, welcome. Appreciate y'all. You know, there's a bunch of others. There's general chat, gaming chat, study group chat. Working. I'm gonna probably be in the study group later today. Um, so feel free to join me in the study group and hang out. Or for those of you that are not in the the Discord, just ask uh, either Mike or Kalen or John to send you a temporary invite. And uh, you, you guys, guys have 30, se 30 minutes to respond. I got a lot of messages that the links expired and I had to send more links. Yeah. So, so I just have to make sure I say that. Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because Andy, you know, I'm going to mute you guys. I'm going to just put alien face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm censoring you guys. <laughs> you guys is coming. <laughs> Only positive things can be written in this thing about me. Only positive things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm just kidding. All right, guys. Well, uh, peace out. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate y'all. And uh, everyone's in the stream later. Peace.